but first, just to see um, to see the kids do the intro for you guys like that, having been this long, not seeing them, what did that mean to you? Uh, it meant the world, man. I think um, anybody who knows me know how special my family is, especially my kids. And I miss my girl. I miss my mom. I miss everybody, man. I, uh, family is the number one thing in my life. So um, obviously I've been missing them. I've been gone about, you know, eight or nine weeks now. So. Um, it's the longest I've been without seeing my kids. So that was that was really cool to see that uh, before a playoff game at that. You know, I definitely got a little teary-eyed there, um, seeing my son get animated and, and hearing from my daughter. So that was, that was really cool. Uh, on the basketball side, uh, late in the first half there, I think you had like eight assists and no turnovers, and you were six for six. You guys were already up 20, and you have that two-for-one opportunity. When that didn't drop, did you kind of think, you know, uh, sh shouldn't have gone for the two-for-one, keep the uh, – Keep the perfect half for the perfect game going. No, nah, I'm not. I'm not thinking about my stats, man. I'm just I'm out there trying to play and and uh, trying to help my team win. I just I just try to take a methodical approach. I mean, I didn't really get that many looks in the first quarter. Um, other guys had it going. I had the one layup in transition, broke the free throw. So, um, you know, but the passes were there. I, I feel like I was collapsing and drawing the defense, and and guys were stepping up and making the shot. So just continue to put pressure on the defense and then I was able to shake free for a couple of threes and once a few of those went in I knew I knew it was gonna be a big night for me. Cool. Thanks Fred. I'm gonna go next to Michael Grange from Sportsnet. Hey Fred, <clears throat> great game. Um how how do you kind of take the temperature of a game as it goes on? As you're saying first quarter you were kind of trying to help other guys get your game off a little bit in the second. What's your mindset in that third quarter when they're really starting to chip in the lead, get it down to eight? Where does your mind go at that point? Uh, just possession by possession, Mike. I think I just try to uh, feel where the game is going, what's the defense giving up, um, who needs some touches. Like, I still try to approach it, you know, as much as the game has gone to scoring for, for guards, I just I try to take that real point guard approach and just see, see what's available. So um, whether it's true or not, I feel like I can give my shot off at any time, especially the way the defenses are playing me. Um, so just being patient and filling the game, and they were making a big run, so I wanted to be a little bit more aggressive um, in the second half and the third quarter to kind of give, you know, hold them off a little bit. Um, and then, you know, fourth quarter time is, is you know, who's, who's hot at that point. And, and obviously we got Pascal, I'll try to give him a couple of touches, but I was able to find my looks and, and they kept finding me and I was able to knock on some open ones. So I'm just trying to do whatever it takes to win. Well, and, you know, when they got it, they cut it down to eight, I mean, it, for, for the one point of the game, you guys couldn't score all that well. What, what did you see? Why why, uh, why were you held to 20-odd in the third quarter there? Uh, they just picked up their intensity. I, I think we slowed down a little bit too much. Um, we've got to continue to keep running our offense. So we'll look at the films here. We can be better. But that team is tough, man. They play really hard. And, and you know, one of those timeouts just reminded the guys, like, you know, we're not going to blow everybody out all the time. This is the playoffs. Everybody belongs to be here. And we did our job by giving ourselves a big cushion. And that's what we're supposed to do. And then you got to play with a lead. So obviously, we would like to win by 40, but that's not going to happen. You know, those guys are pros too, and they, they made a big run. So we'll look at the film too. We could clean up. Um, but overall, I thought it was a good win and um, scoring 134. But we got we to clean up on the defensive end a little bit. Appreciate it, Fred. Have a good night. I'm going to go next to Dan Wojcicki from the LA Times. Hey, Fred. Um, typically in the playoffs, you know, crowd atmosphere is, is such a differentiator. I'm curious, what was it like not having that? Did it still feel like a playoff game? And, and if so, how much did the, the things like the special national anthem, the intros, to help to kind of get make, make today feel more special than, say, two days ago, three days ago? Yeah, I mean, I think uh... – the atmosphere is obviously is night and day, so we didn't really get that playoff atmosphere in terms of that. But I thought we 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 uh, hyped ourselves up. You know, I thought this is the most locked in we've been all year. Um, it felt like the guys were amped up and energized, and you know, having one one it kind of puts you at a peace throughout the year. And, and now it's time to, to kick it into gear. So I thought we were pretty engaged. I loved our energy, our, our attentiveness, and focus. And that's all you can ask for. I mean, we can't duplicate twenty thousand of the best fans in the world. So. Um, we just got to go out there and, and create our own energy. I thought we did a good job of that. Uh, you know, whatever whatever gets you going, whether it's the anthems or, you know, seeing your family before the game, whatever the case may be, um, if you're still looking for motivation at this point of the year, then you're probably in trouble. So I think we got a lot of guys that can that are self-motivated, and that helps. 
I'm going to go next to Josh Lewinberg from TSN. Hey, Fred. Uh, you, you spent a lot of time on Levert. Uh, obviously, he's been playing really well. What's the focus in terms of slowing him down, and how do you feel he did in terms of adjusting to the coverages? Yeah, uh, just make it tough on him. You know, like any of the great scorers in the league, uh, just not really stopping him. Just make it tough on him. I thought uh, we did a good job of limiting his looks, uh, crowding the floor, and he did a good job of, of making that the pass when it was there. So, you know, pick your poison. I thought we did a good job on him from a scoring standpoint, and I think he ended up with 14 or 15 assists. So um, they were knocking down the open threes. We got to look and see where we can adjust there. But, you know, we executed our game plan for the most part. And, you know, obviously uh, – I take a lot of pride on my defense. I felt like I did a decent job with him. So look at the tape and, uh, you know, get some rest and, and see how we can adjust and, and get better for game two. Have a good night. All right. And last question is going to go to Bruce Arthur from the Toronto Star. Fred, you talked about wanting to get Pascal some shots. In the bubble, he hasn't scored at the kind of – at the level that he was scoring during the regular season, he's still trying to find it. What have you seen in his game, and are, are you seeing him getting closer uh, to the Pascal you kind of expect? Uh, I mean, I think our record is eight and one, man. I, I, to be honest with you, I'm tired of answering that question. No disrespect to you or anybody else, but um, Pascal's good, and and I think we got a great team of guys who're not really worried about the bottom line, not worried about you know what the stat line looks like after the game. Um, it's just about, you know, about getting wins and losses. He's doing a great job of picking his spots, and, and he's getting a lot of attention, and he's, he's been kicking them out. So, um, you know, there'll be games where he'll have big games, and there'll be games where he needs to draw the defense and, and kick it out. So he's been playing great. You know, in my eyes, I love his intensity. I um, love his focus on the defensive end. And, um, you know, I'm personally not going to be a part of that narrative that he needs to score more, he needs to be the number one option, or whatever the case may be for our team. As um, long as we're winning, you know, I think that's all we care about. That's totally fair, and I, I get that. One thing he said that was striking is that at the beginning of the bubble, he he didn't feel like his energy was up, but now it is. And now – now he, did you see that at the beginning in terms of just, just him trying to become – he's so energetic anyway, right? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And that's one thing we've been talking about since we got here um, is just trying to find ways to, to get him going in terms of his body language and, and get his body moving. Um, I think P is a guy who – who uh, plays off the energy of the crowd and, and plays off of the atmosphere of the big games and trash talking and, and all of that stuff. So it's a different environment. I think practice kind of stayed on my out a little bit, if I want to be honest. I think nobody in practice want to let them score.